My name is Dr. Rajesh Khanna. I direct uh, the Cognition, Brain and Autism Research Lab at UAB. We also look at different types of neuroimaging research involving children as well as adults with autism spectrum disorders. I think you know two directions you know the field is taking at this point is you know one you know to find out the etiology uh, of autism which means the the cause and the second direc direction is more um, translational where applying some of the information gained from um, neurobiological research to intervention and and treatment since I moved to uh, UAB um, and started my own lab you know we have been thinking a lot about uh, starting a translational neuroimaging project Linda Moodbell um, approached us asking about a potential collaboration and we thought this is a great uh, point you know, where we can take advantage of people with autism in visual processing which is the basis of intervention programs at Linda Moodbell um, which emphasizes imagery. So we decided we'll design a set of language studies, identify a group of children with autism who are, who are good in reading but you know, poor in their comprehension, you know. And then we started to look at um, those children and to apply a specific intervention which is visualizing, verbalizing um, for language comprehension and thinking and to see how that will impact, you know, their um, brain responses to um, language tasks in general. And so we had to identify a group of children who are probably missed in school, you know, in the sense that you know, they are not identified that they have a language impairment in school because, you know, they read reasonably well. So they get through the things, you know, but they don't perform well at all. And we went through probably about, you know, um, 100 subjects or something in terms of screening process, um, identified, you know, about, you know, 30 or 40 of them to be eligible to participate in the study. Um, we randomly assigned them into um, the intervention group and a weightless control group. So we have also had a third group, you know, which are the typical um, individuals, you know, who does not have an autism um, diagnosis. So all these three groups of participants, you know, went through a set of, um, you know, um, tests and, and scanning afterwards. You know. So they come for one set of scans, you know, complete that and testing, and they go for intervention. And after um, that, in you know, a 12 weeks of intervention, they come back again for the second scan. So you need to have good data from both these scans from a participant to be included in the analysis. We have made it clear, and Linda Moodwell was completely on board with us, you know, on this one that. Um, on the scientific part of the study, there won't be any influence, you know, from the Linda Wood Bell, you know. So I think that has been one of the uh, one of the most important things, you know, from the start onwards. You know, there was very little interference, you know, from um, Linda Wood Bell in terms of um, whether we should, you know, design the experiment this way or you know use the data in this way. Nothing like that. We definitely believe that the intervention um, overall is consistent. You know, part of it is because Linda Moodbell has a very strict procedure and training process involved in there um, about you know um, the intervention, and it's an established method visualizing and verbalizing. And you also have uh, at the same center clinicians you know rotating to give them a a randomized sort of picture rather than the same person creating a bias. All, all families you know, told us you know, good stories about their intervention. They had uh, really good experience you know, at their centers, you know, as well as you know, how much it has helped in um, improving uh, their child. He did not speak until he, uh, three and a half years old. And even then it was um, in syllables. So he went through intense speech therapy and um, was able to string together ba, na, na to know that that meant banana. So he started speaking, um, I'd say full sentences, probably around the time he was five or six. Well, Linda Mood Bell was something that was recommended to us from several sources. Jake's speech pathologist, Jake's, we have a child psychologist that um, we see frequently, and they've all recommended Lu Linda Mood Bell. We had Jake tested. They said he'd really benefit from a full program and we really prayed and we're trying to figure out what were we going to do? How are we going to get, make, you know, meet Jacob's needs? And we received a phone call from the office here in Newport and said, there's a study that we'd like Jacob to be considered for. Would you be interested? And it was just an answer to our prayers. 
he loved every single hour of it. He would, after, I was thinking after like 10 hours of therapy, he'd be like, Mom, why do I have to do this during summer? He would jump out of the car after 50 hours, after 100 hours, after 150 hours. He was still super excited to walk through the doors. Him, I have so many teachers that come to me and say, he is my best behaved student. He is engaged. He adds, you know, information that he knows about topics to a topic. So clearly what's going on in class, he's able to process that information and not just take it in and kind of like store it away to try to deal with it later on. He's actually able to engage in dialogue and conversation in real time, which is great. He's reading books that have no pictures and he reads them. He reads them and he remembers details. He remembers significant details where he can have conversations with people about them. He, he does have a, an autism diagnosis um, and a, an auditory processing delay, not a disorder. Um, but his testing now is moving to the point where he's slowly moving off the spectrum um, as, as of his most recent testings. He can achieve um, whatever he wants to achieve. Well, now I'm doing pretty well with picturing because Lynn Moon Bell really helped. Like, they did a really good job. They really helped me along the way. Basically, there's stories. Then you, you read the stories. Like, you start by going sentence by sentence. And then, and then you have to picture what's going on in the sentences. Like, you picture what's going on. Like, let's say if you were to picture, like, the first sentence said, there's a cheetah running through the jungle. Then you have to picture a cheetah and like what what he looks like, what the surroundings like, and like what everything is, um, what everything in that picture is like. I make pictures in my head. It's easier for me when I read stories to picture what's going on. So then I can like, if someone asks me like, like what were you picturing in the book? I could easily tell them. Well, yeah, next year I'm going to go into high school. And, um, yeah, so I feel confident for high school with my pictures. Um, Daniel is adopted from, uh, he was in an orphanage in Russia, and we got him when he was 21 months old. And um, because we knew there was a language barrier and we had some other developmental things going on, we weren't aware of his diagnosis of autism for a number of years. He was not diagnosed until he was in the second grade. He set us on medicine first to uh, counteract some of the issues that Daniel was experiencing, uh, anxieties. He was, you know, as Ann was saying, he was standoffish. We didn't realize that that was a normal behavior for an Asperger child, but uh, that he uh, wouldn't stay focused, couldn't really get into reading anything, um, was constantly looking around and seeing what others were doing instead of what he was maybe asked to do in school, and that was a very big problem. We were told by a friend that Linda Mood Bell uh, existed and that UAB was doing a study and so I called and asked about it and I think it was the day before the deadline so we got in just barely we did some testing with them and um, he did qualify so we were thrilled actually we were uh, in the control group and we didn't get to come until it was all over so they waited and did another MRI and then and then we got to come to Linda Mubell. He loved everybody here. They were compassionate with him. They embraced him. And he immediately, when I would bring him, he would just come here in the back and they would begin uh, a series of uh, reading him stories and having him remember uh, verbally and try to put into words uh, you know, what it was that he, that he had just read or that he had just heard. And it was very exhausting for him. First couple of weeks, he, I could tell he really was mentally drained. He would fall asleep in the car mm -hmm. between here and home, and that's only 20 minutes. We noticed over, over time, um, he was able to just to have conversations with us better at the dinner, at the, uh, at the dinner table. And he would be more relaxed and, and share with us in, in more detail <laughs> instead of just one word answers. Uh, what went on his day of school, what was it like? Um, he started having the words. 
to use. And so I think the processes that Linda Mood Bell shared with him kind of woke up that part of his brain to allow him to use those words and, and to find out what words to use. He is doing much better since Linda Mood Bell, his grades went from D's and F's to A's and B's. A lot of times we want him to shut up because he won't <laughs> stop talking now. He uses words. He can actually have a good conversation. And, and he is comfortable. You can tell it's in, in his voice when he does say things. And as, he's as, funny. As he's funny. He plans to be funny, and sometimes he doesn't, but it's funny anyway, and he gets it. He'll laugh. Before, he, he thought we were laughing at him. Yeah. But now, he, he can try to be funny and succeed, and sometimes when he doesn't mean it, he can laugh at himself. So, you know, it's very satisfying to feel like he's a part of the other boys and um, that he, most of the time we don't really notice there's a difference. We forget, and he's come so far that there really isn't a difference. We found really interesting results within two of our studies you know, which we published you know, at this point. So one paper, we looked at the visual imagery um, sentence comprehension task, you know, which is published in um, Autism Research you know, um, Journal. And the other one, uh, we looked at the language network of the brain when the participants are not doing any task you know, while they are resting. And uh, that paper is published in Human Brain Mapping. So in, in both these studies, you know, the main results we find is that, you know, we see a significant change in the comprehension, in language comprehension of these participants from time one to time two. So after they take the intervention and then come back and do the language tasks, you know, they improve their comprehension ability. Number two, we found that comprehension ability or the improvement in comprehension predicting their brain activity. So it's interesting that you know, we see a lot of activation at the second scan in uh, two critical areas you know, which are considered as the classic language regions in the brain, you know, the Broca's area and Wernicke's area. And we find um, improvement in activation um, in those two areas. The third part is, you know, we looked at the connectivity of these regions to the rest of the brain as well as, you know, between those two regions. You know. So, um, Broca's and Wernicke's are two different language areas. We looked at the connectivity between those two, which means the crosstalk or the communication between those two, and that to be improved in the second session. We also looked at, you know, how Wernicke's area is connected with the rest of the brain and Broca's area is connected with the rest of the brain. So that connectivity also significantly improved after the intervention, which clearly shows that, you know, um, the intervention has significantly contributed in um, activating the resources, you know, which are right for approaching a language task. All these results at the brain level are predicting or are correlated with their improvement in language comprehension. So we found our um, participants with autism showing more language um, comprehension. Um, the improvement in, in, in language ability, they improved to such a level that was better than the typical individuals. Even when we are scanning a child you know, who is 13 years of age or 12 years of age, even with intense and carefully planned and targeted intervention, you can change the brain activity.